Day two of Formula One testing at Barcelona is over and it's been a hugely interesting day, topped of course by Kimi Räikkönen for Alfa Romeo who almost brought the session to a close late on with a stoppage just before turn nine but he remained on top, there was a little bit of running after that but nothing meaningful but we've had a really interesting technological talking point of course uh, day two of Barcelona, I'm joined by our technical consultant Tim Wright to talk about it and it pertains to the Mercedes W11 and a very innovative steering system. Uh, Tim, you've had a chance to have a look at Mercedes' brand new steering system. First of all, what is it and uh, how has it come about? Right, this is going to obviously going to be a very contentious point um, <laughs> up until and um, probably past the first race. What it appears that Mercedes have found is that they have some sort of system attached to the steering column and steering system that changes the toe at the front of the car uh, w whether it's in a straight line or whether it's more toe out for the the twisty bit so obviously more toe out uh, in the slow speed corners is is advantageous for them but it's a, it's the way that they've done it and does it uh, fall within the regulations which is going to be the talking point i feel for the next few weeks and so the system is called DAS or DAS dual axis steer and so the driver can not only steer left and right but also push and pull the steering wheel in. Um, now Tim, how is it getting around the regulations in that regard because it seems like it should be legal really. Well the, the FIA say it's legal, um, I, I can't understand that because um, uh, there are several things in the regulations that, that ban you from changing uh, things on the steering. And um, obviously they outlawed rear wheel steering. Um, but th th it's an interpretation of, of the, the rules. Um, what it appears, I'm not sure that the driver actually pushes and pulls the steering. I, my feeling is that he has got a control which and if, if we when we were watching uh, some of the footage um, he presses a button as a marker to show the team where he's actually actioned this this and this was at the end of the the main straight and you can quite clearly see the steering wheel moves forward and the the front wheels then start to tow out a bit more uh, for the for, for turns one and two um, now, it's as I say, it's the interpretation of, of of the rules. Is that uh, steering? They'll say it's the steering, but steering to me is still part of the suspension system. Uh, so this is going to be the, uh, the the talking point, as I say, for for some time yet. Um, <laughs> is it legal? I. I have my doubts, but if the FIA say yes, then the trouble is that's going to open the floodgates because everybody's going to jump on this. What I'm worried about is that unless the FIA police this correctly, people are going to come up with all sorts of things in a hurry to try and get around this. Um, and that's where I, I, th I think you know they've, they've opened the door to uh, misinterpretation. And so over the day, other than Mercedes, you've had the chance to have a look at a few other cars as well. Uh, Kimi Räikkönen was obviously fastest. Uh, I was watching down at turn nine today and he still seemed a little bit unsure of the car, but he did seem to be quite quick on the C5 tyre. But other observations, Tim, what have you been able to see? Who looks good out on the Barcelona circuit? Well, there's, there's no doubt that, that uh, Mercedes are still ahead of the others. Um, I was also out watching from turn 10 round to the chicane. The one car that attracted my attention through timing it through that session was the Haas, funnily enough. Um, and uh, also the, the Ferrari. The Ferrari seems to be in a little bit of trouble at the moment. I'm not sure that they've actually unlocked the potential of that car as Mercedes have done. Um, even both drivers are, are in the low 18s, whereas you know the quickest time obviously is, is Kimi with a, a 17-0. So 
they've got a bit of work to do maybe tomorrow with uh, more uh, testing and if they're out early in the morning when I think the track is at its best uh, the, the times will come but I fear for them one of the um, things that we did pick up on was the Red Bull uh, with their multi-link lower wishbone uh, which I had a look at um, with Giorgio and what I think it does it gets around the um, the push rod at, you know the, the, the way everybody else is, is running their push rod so that in on full lock or on, on increased lock it dips the front of the car. I think Red Bull are getting around that by the way they've configured their wishbones and the steering arm so that it's a little bit like the, the, the old uh, Citroen 2CV. <laughs> <laughs> when you turn the wheel, it turns, uh, it puts on a lot of caster, which automatically then will dip the front of the, the, the car in, in the same sort of manner. Uh, that's that's my interpretation of it. In reality, I it may not be spot on, but that's what I can see that they're doing because I can't see that they've got an articulated push rod uh, unless it's very well hidden. Overall, I think um, looking at the long runs, I think Mercedes have definitely got an advantage over over everybody. They're a clear, I would say, a clear second ahead of, of any of their competitors. Brilliant. Thank you, Tim. And there'll be so much more to come over the next couple of days of testing. So join us then. It's going to be a hugely interesting final day of week one before we move next week into week two, the final three days of Barcelona testing.